Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman. Our next guest up in our virtual studio is Ed Jennings, CEO of QuickBase. Welcome to Radio Entrepreneurs. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Glad to be here today. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about QuickBase to start, and then we'll talk a little bit about your background. And uh, we've coined a phrase for you for today. We'll save that for a little later. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, so um, QuickBase, actually, I don't know if as many people know this. We were a division of Intuit for many years, for about uh, 16 years. And about four years ago, we were spun off as an independent business. So we're in the, the low-code space, and specifically, it's a platform for business technologists, non-developers, non-coders, to write business applications. And so we have millions of production apps run by half of the Fortune 500, all written by people with no development or coding background. Yet they're, they're doing claims processing, they're doing you know, retail location identification, they're doing critical processes in finance, HR, et cetera. So. Wow, so really interesting. So, so I, I guess what they are is subject matter experts within their own industries or fields and have an idea or a concept that an app needs to be developed. Is that generally the theme? And then they use your platform to, to I guess, pull the tools together to be able to develop? Is that, is that what it is happening? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good question. I mean, what's, what's most common is, and, and I think that the last few years have been, been driving a lot. I mean, every business is digitizing. And again, old overused expression, everybody's becoming a software company. Everyone's trying to automate. I mean, pandemic just accelerated all of that. But it also just shined a bright light. There aren't enough developers. I mean, like that is an acute problem. It has been made more intense and obvious over the last few years. And so most of the people building applications are within companies. They're, they're, they're tolerating an Excel process that's being emailed around to do accounts receivable. They're, they're dealing with a quality control process where they put something in like a smart sheet and they're trying to keep tab tabular updates of you know, different quality metrics. They're, they're dealing with these sort of manual, laborious, they might even be digital, but sort of email centric things and saying, there's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be a faster way. This is making my job not that fun. How can I, how could I automate this? How could we just like eliminate me doing this manually out every day? And so that's most of our applications being built by people exactly right in the business. They know what they need to fix. They know how they want to fix it. They've just never had the tools and they don't know how to use a Microsoft Power Apps or, a, you know, some sort of coding language because those are meant for developers. And so um, this is where this platform is really powerful. So, so tell us a little bit at a high level in terms of how somebody engages with QuickBase, how that uh, process sort of rolls out. Um, I, I, I think I heard very clearly you say they don't need the, the development skills or technological skills. They just need to be able to articulate probably and, and uh, map out their process. Is that generally what's needed? Yeah, no, no, yeah, great question. So yes, it's a complete SaaS platform and all of the complexity is hidden in behind it. I mean, it is a in-memory relational database with a broad infrastructure with complex business logic sitting in, you know, an AWS environment. They don't need to see any of that. They just need to think about a process they want to fix. And some people start literally with a spreadsheet and they'll, maybe they're keeping some sort of inventory or they're managing their facilities. They're doing some sort of a logistics and supply chain. We do a lot of work around that. They literally can import spreadsheets and will automatically generate you know, a web front end, the business logic, the entire database in behind, behind that. Other people think, you mentioned process and sort of a, a flow. They, a lot of people like to work in tools like Lucid, Lucid Diagram. You can literally take a Lucid Diagram, imagine swim lanes and different steps and handoffs and triggers and, and decisions that have to be made and notifications that get triggered. If you've mapped that, you literally can generate a quick base application directly from that lucid diagram. So hmm. it's really, can you think of the problem? Can you identify what you want it to look like? We can then help you build an application to do that. And, and what's typically the time frame? I know uh, typical may be hard, but you know, uh, a company engages with you um, and then uh, you, you know, let's say they provide the lucid chart and you know, the process flow, et cetera. What's, what's the typical time from uh, engagement to they're actually using an application? Yeah. So. We'll make people usually, um, we have free trials. Like people just go to our website, quickbase.com, set up a free trial and try to build some apps. Um, we have a library of thousands of pre-built apps around really common use cases, project management, inventory, CRM for a small company, you name it. So they can start from something like that. So usually they can get going in, in days. Um, 
usually what we'll do then is take them through sort of our certification process. We can make, we don't even call them developers. We call them builders. We can make highly lethal builders uh, in terms of like production, sophisticated production apps, usually in weeks. Um, the, the pandemic was a great example. We, a lot of the states um, originally had signed on to work with one of the big four to, to build apps for one, first the, the equipment, so safety equipment, um, and then later uh, apps that were supposedly they were going to be able to license to distribute vaccines, both schedule, have people show up, you know, like the sort of a QC code kind of a thing. A lot of that didn't work. And so we were getting states like Texas apps sort of specced, built and live to do all of their sort of scheduling for their web app to location identification, to like generate for a mobile app, a QC code that they could show up with, mm-hmm. automatically schedule the follow-up, deal with people in person at facilities and their home. That was built in less than a month for something as significant as the state of Texas. So it, it is, it's usually speed that we're competing on. It, it is remarkable. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, when you cite those examples specifically, go, aha, there was somebody behind all this because there's no way the state could have executed. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, obviously a lot of moving parts, so you had 350 million people. Uh, well, we only know maybe 175 million, still a lot of people to move through a process and, you know, have it digitized and automated in some fashion. So, Ed, let's uh, talk a little bit about you and, and what you bring. Um, you, you joined QuickBase. So uh, we've, ter- we've dubbed you the accelerator. You're a guy who works with companies that uh, have evolved and, and developed and now want to uh, go up that acceleration curve. So um, you've done that before in your career. You've, uh, you've worked with other companies. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been blessed to work for some amazing Boston area companies. Um, the, you know, really cut my teeth early days of my career and spent several years at PTC and, and really learned what, what a big scaling sort of high, like high growth company can look like. But then since, since then, um, you know, spent some time in cybersecurity, a company called Veracode, and was on a you know, part of a great team that grew that from about 20 million to about 100 when it was sold to CA. And then uh, following that, Mimecast uh, grew that from about 80 to about 480, took it public along the way. And now QuickBase, you know, we're a couple hundred million, but aspirations to be and, and have a growth curve to be a much bigger company. And so I actually dubbed the teenager. I, I don't know why. And I have this, this image I oftentimes use of... Uh, that movie super bad of that kind of rite of passage, crazy teenagers and, and uh, coming in and, and usually building on a f- amazing foundation, you know, great product, but a business has to go from tens to maybe hundreds of salespeople, go from being in a country or two to being global, you go from being, you know, maybe a couple of distribution partners to a bunch, maybe through development or acquisition, go from a single product company to a portfolio. That that step is one I love. Um, it's one I think I can kind of help a company with. And a, and a really important phase, obviously, in terms of uh, scale and development. Um, just because you do it once doesn't mean you have the ability to replicate it. Uh, and I think, as you point out, without those foundational elements in place, um, but it's, it's one thing to have the foundation. It's another thing to be able to replicate and scale it. And uh, you seem as though a guy that, that, that has that background, that ability. Um, what do you see for entrepreneurs? Uh, just, uh, you know, we like to impart lessons learned. Um, what do you see as sort of the common building blocks in the companies that you've been involved with and, and why they've been successful at, at being able to scale? Because we all know for every company that has achieved success in scaling, there's probably a hundred that haven't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think the premise starts with there is a compelling differentiated technology and, and it's in a market that has some size to it. You know, like no matter how well you run a business, if neither of those facts are true, I, there's always so much you can do. You know what I mean? I think there's, yep. there's those limitations. Take those as a given. Um, three things, I think three things that I'd see every time. Um, typically, the core team it's not totally replaced, but usually there are people that want and can go to another level that can really elevate as leaders and start to really empower others. Others want to really have their hands on a lot and they're, they make for better entrepreneurs or they make for better small company because they're in the center, like a hub and spoke. Others think more like system thinkers. And so I think a lot of it is usually finding those on the team that want to kind of elevate to a system approach. Uh, and those who don't. And so, and finding out, uh, bringing some, some talent from the outside so that the team dynamic is usually a big part of it. Um, and then the second uh, is strategically, ironically, almost every time we're broadening things like go to market or countries, but we're narrowing the market strategy. 
Like it's usually getting rid of the ancillary, you know, they, they did one all thing. things to all people approach. Yes. I, uh, Mimecast is a good example. We, we, um, we were doing archiving, we were doing a range of different sort of cyber things. And this was sort of when really the, the advanced threats against email were emerging. It was like, we're make email safer. They already had just come up with the tag. We're like, that's all that matters. If we could do that really well, then that's an amazing value prop to solve a critical problem that every single company is dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, so it, a lot of times it's narrowing at quick base. We're going through the same journey. We, you can build apps across businesses for a range of things, but we're seeing people managing really big, messy, complex projects where you got to connect different systems and get control of those people in construction, like Suffolk constructions, a con consigli two great builders in the Boston area, building one Dalton and other projects like that. Um, Intel building semi to fabs. We, we have a range of solar companies sort of rolling out solar across, you know, the United States, those kind of big, messy, complex projects. That's a really hard problem. And we're saying of all the ones we saw, we do that really well. So we're sort of narrowing on, you know, get people sort of, you know, let them connect, let them control, let them have visibility in that. So we're narrowing those projects. So, so, so the second thing is usually having really getting at, and this is not something that I'd ever bring. It's more about, uncovering. People always know it. You come into an organization, I'm usually getting there. They, they have these ideas. It's just a lot of noise has been added. It's like, pull, pull pulling it all together. So yeah, so get you're... to the signal, get to the signal. And then um, third is, is go to market. There's always opportunity to really think more structurally about how do you grow, go to market. I mean, so for me, and that's just an area that I have a, a, a career and a lot of passion for. And um, so th those are the three areas that I've usually been able to help a little bit. Excellent. Great, great advice. Great story. Uh, summarizing, you know, make sure there's a market for, to be able to scale, make sure you've got the right team for the right journey ahead. Um, uh, narrow the scope and, and provide laser focus on what problem you're trying to solve and, uh, and develop a good go-to-market strategy. Did I get well it? said, Jonathan. Well said. I, Ex that's great. Excellent stuff. Our, our guest on Radio Entrepreneurs has been Ed Jennings, CEO of QuickBase. Uh, Ed, if people want to get in touch with you, learn more about QuickBase and its offerings or how to uh, perhaps join the journey. What's the, everyone's always looking for good people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. To be a team so, today. What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Sure. So love to have people come visit us at quickbase.com. And again, they can try the product. They can learn more about what we're doing. But if other entrepreneurs and leaders want to talk to me about the journeys, I've got lots of scars. I've learned most things the hard way. Uh, feel free to reach out personally, ejennings at quickbase.com. Either way, lo love to talk to folks. Excellent. It's been a, a real pleasure and really appreciate you coming on entrepreneurs, uh, Radio Entrepreneurs today. Thanks, Jonathan. Take care. Excellent. We'll be right back with another guest on Radio Entrepreneurs.